Last year was the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death. He is now the most performed playwright in America. 95% of American school children will encounter Shakespeare at least once before they're 18. And the greatest collection of original materials connected to Shakespeare is here in Washington, DC. We looked at that opportunity, the 400th anniversary of his death, to figure out for ourselves and maybe to reach others with this message to say that we really are the ultimate resource for Shakespeare, one of history's greatest storytellers, and that there's a place for us in communities widely across the United States. This is a picture of our Renaissance reading room, and this is our reading room by day, but you can imagine about 800 scholars a year coming to work with rare materials that are 400, 500 years old. These are people who are doing a deep dive into history, and um, that's a very special place. It's also a place that very few people can enter because it's where our rare books and manuscripts are circulating. And so that led us to think about what we could share in our collection and take on the road. You're seeing here a picture of the opening page of Shakespeare's first folio. The first folio was printed in 1623, and it contains 36 of Shakespeare's plays. 18 of those plays only appear in this book. So without the first folio, we wouldn't have Julius Caesar, Measure for Measure, Macbeth, uh, Twelfth Night. It's a book that really gave us Shakespeare, and it's quite rare. We're lucky at the Folger to have 82 copies of this book. There are 235 known copies in the world. So it's a resource that we have that we think is something that could excite other people. And so as we thought about the 400th anniversary and the wonder of will, we decided to take this book to 50 states and to two territories. That means that every community potentially could get within a couple hours drive of this landmark book and see the to be or not to be speech, which is where we open the book to, in the flesh, eyeball to page, and have that experience of, of encountering Shakespeare at the source. And people really responded. This is a picture of one of, the, one of our sites. Uh, we saw crowds of people lining up to see this book. The experience that people had when they encountered the book for example, we learned that someone had successfully proposed marriage in front of the book uh, in South Dakota. And we found that out on, um, on Twitter because they have a hashtag called she said yes. <laughs> People broke down into tears when they came in front of the book. I have pictures of guards who were guarding the spaces who, when they had a break, would go over to the page and read it. Uh, the book was a catalyst for our partners across the country to program and engage their communities. And that was one of the most important things that we learned through The Wonder of Will, is that you can take a rare book, but you can use it as an invitation to ask other people to get involved and to program their connections and their community interests into the visit. So these are the panels that we created for the first folio. This is a crash course in Shakespeare, his interpretation. Uh, we, we worked really hard to explain the to be or not to be speech within about 60 words. That was a real challenge. We also translated our panels into Spanish because we knew there were multiple language communities that were going to encounter the book. These were flat packable. This, along with the folio, could go by secret courier from one location to the next. And we were very lucky that we had no um, that nothing went awry. Our 18 folios traveled the country and all came back. The programming that went with the first folio was incredible. So when the book went to New Orleans, they decided to put on a jazz funeral for Shakespeare. And, and some of the most distinguished musicians in New Orleans did a proper funeral for an artist, and they they took us, they took uh, community members around the city and did it right. That group then came to the Folger and did another concert, a funeral for Shakespeare at the Folger. And we had people from all over Washington come to be a part of that. That group then went to Stratford-upon-Avon and did the same concert. So it was a great example of 
creating a partnership that led to a piece of programming that then started to hop around and build connections between different institutions. And that was one of the most exciting things about the wonder of Will, or WOW, as we started to call it. There was also a lot of interaction. We know that people carry Shakespeare's words with them. Uh, Shakespeare wrote in the language of our dreams, as Cornell West once said. And we, we wanted to hear what people thought about the book. So there were great opportunities for people to tell their Shakespeare story. There was a hashtag for them to share those online. And you know, people were not at a loss for words. Um, everyone has some kind of connection to Shakespeare, whether they know it or not. You know, if you're lonely, uh, maybe you are Hamlet. If you are facing your first leadership challenge, you might be Henry V. Uh, if you feel like an outsider, you may be like Othello, and you will someday have to meet your Iago. But those are all stories that we carry around with us, or maybe we've heard from someone else, and it's a way of sustaining a connection with audiences that we wanted to meet. There was also a very large social media campaign. We noticed that people were asking for their photos to be taken with the book, so that would be a shelfie, a selfie with a great book. Um, and we also created a new database of the original documents that mention Shakespeare within his lifetime. It turns out that no one had actually gone and looked at all of them in the 400 years since Shakespeare's death. So our curator of manuscripts, Dr. Heather Wolf, got permissions from several institutions. We put all of these original documents online and we transcribed them. Little did people know when this went live that Heather had made a discovery, she had found dozens of, over a dozen uh, manuscript references to William Shakespeare that were created during his lifetime. Something that uh, really surprised everyone in the Shakespeare community, including this image, which is an image of, a, of Shakespeare's coat of arms, which identifies Shakespeare as both a gentleman and an actor, and that is crucial to the case for showing that Shakespeare really was the man from Stratford. That story was then covered by the New York Times, which then which linked back to the online resource. So we had many opportunities to make connection with earned media, but also to reflect those stories in assets that we had curated and created especially for this occasion. In addition to sending the book, we wanted to send theater. So our theater uh, group, Folger Theater, created a one-man show called The Gravedigger's Tale, which starred Louis Batelli. And Louis could engage an audience of this size or larger as the gravedigger in Hamlet, and every line that he spoke was a line from the play. So people could interact, but they got a chance to hear the language and the actual words from Hamlet. Finally, we did a lot of education work. We realized that when we send a big book like this to a city, we should also get the mayor involved, the district superintendent involved. We should be getting into classrooms because of the coverage of Shakespeare and because we teach teachers all the time. We wanted to get that opportunity to share our curriculum, our digital image set. We've got about 100,000 high quality digital images for teachers to share with their students. And we wanted to see this land with students. So that was another important aspect of the wonder of Will. We needed to find something for April 23rd, which is what we think is Shakespeare's birthday and also the day that he died. And so for April 23rd, the actual 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death, we did the wonder of Will live with C-SPAN. And C-SPAN Book TV decided to cover this event. We staged it inside our reading room, and this is a picture of a Renaissance reading room becoming a modern television studio. We were able to invite our friends and board members to be in the studio audience when the event took place. The uh, whole event in involved inviting people who, had ha who were leaders in politics, culture, or the arts, and having them talk about their connection with Shakespeare. Access was very and is very, very important. We wanted to reach people in other languages, in other modes. We were lucky enough to have this um, in ASL simultaneously with the testimonials that people gave. This is Justice Breyer, who uh, loves to talk about Shakespeare. 
and who talked about his own experience, not only learning about Shakespeare, but how great works of literature can help us as we think about the most challenging issues in politics, law, and culture. We were also lucky to have a guest, Cal Penn, who uh, is just hilarious and stole the show. He also has a very large social media following. And <laughs> You know, we could tweet about our event, but when one of our guests started talking about what we were doing and thousands and thousands of people started to retweet that, we learned that the power of networking and of, of getting everyone who's involved also to co-promote the event was crucial to the kind of coverage that we had through the wonder of will. So at the end of that anniversary year, we had 750,000 people who we had reached through our exhibition and performance work. That is a leap well above what we do locally. We have about 60,000 visitors by day, and then we also have between 50 and 60,000 nighttime visitors seeing our theater work. This event and initiative multiplied that. We also had more than 3.3 million people interact with us online. We occupy a half a city block in Washington, D.C., but this was an, a moment for us when we realized that we could connect with many, many more people around our mission and around Shakespeare. That first folio that I showed you was physically or face-to-face -face encountered by 532,000 people. I want to say more about that when I get to the lessons learned. And then we a hundred, more than 100,000 new followers on our social media platforms. And those are people we have an ongoing relationship with now. I wanted to reflect a little bit about on what that experience was like for me, for staff, and for really the whole institution, because the wonder of will was a transformative experience for us. We knew that we had a national mission and that we could have a national reach. By dedicating the resources to this event, which meant staff, board, everyone uh, putting the shoulder to the wheel, we really discovered that that was true and that commitment uh, paid off. The second thing I wanted to mention is that the experience changed us. When we went to a university to where the art museum was showing our book, we would also see the president of the university, the deans, the mayor, um, city government, donors. These were all the different departments, theater, history, English, these were opportunities for people to realize that they were part of a community. And at a moment when the value of the humanities is not as clear today as it was 20 or 30 years ago, it was a galvanizing event for our peers and a way for them to show their leadership that what they do really, really matters. That experience in turn changed how we think about our connections to our community. And I really wanted to stress that because this was not a one-way broadcast model. We asked our partners to program and to figure out how they wanted to reach out to people. In Miami, they had a hot pepper eating contest where people ate hot peppers and then they read the sonnets. There was, uh, it, of course. Uh, in addition, there was the jazz funeral in New Orleans. There was a night sky from the planetarium in Denver. There was a great indie rock band named Low that played a concert for the first folio in Duluth, Minnesota. It was just amazing what people gave and put into it. And I think it changed us, and we now think of ourselves as the wonder of will 2.0. This is a program that, that we want to sustain. I did want to say that it was really important to identify key audiences early on. We know that people who are real Shakespeare lovers who may um, have spent their lives studying Shakespeare know all about us. But what about the people who see one or two Shakespeare plays a year? That is a crucial audience for us. And early on, we said that the Shakespeare enthusiast was someone that we should be interacting with. And we decided to plan accordingly. Finally, it was really important to get communities to engage with the project and start steering. So in keeping with uh, this not being a broadcast model, asking our partners, what is the meaningful way that your community is going to engage with this book and the Folger? was really, really important. We know we have a national audience as a result of this, and now we have an obligation to continue to meet them. We have relationships that we need to continue to enrich and deepen, 
And part of what Tessitura does is to help us understand how we can continue to do that in a meaningful, energetic way. We also bet on everybody last year. Shakespeare's plays are read by so many people, we thought that we needed to meet the next William Shakespeare, you know, the next Toni Morrison, the next Emily Dickinson, the next August Wilson. Where will that person come from? We don't know. And so the strategy was we would bet on all 50 states and two territories because everybody ought to have that chance. And that was probably, for me, the most important part of The Wonder of Will was that philosophy of placing your bets on everybody and opening out onto the possibilities of transformation. The last uh, lesson that we learned, and it's probably one of the hardest, is to keep going. We have these new friends. We have some new muscles from programming. We know many, many more people and have had these relationships build up with institutions and partners. But for the next five to 10 years, we need to be going back to those partners and saying, here's something else that we'd like to send to your community. Now that we know who the players are, we know what we can do responsibly, managing that will be one of the most important things that the Folger does over the next five to 10 years. But we're very enthusiastic about the importance of not just this collection, but the work that gets done. We were delighted to be able to share this and to learn from the wonder of Will. And I'm really glad that we can talk to you about it because there's wisdom in crowds and um, you have probably tried things like this and learned. We are trying to keep learning. So I look forward to the conversations with you and um, would be happy to answer any questions that you have about the wonder of Will.